Hey friends, it's Marie at Living Felt and today we have a really fun, festive holiday project for you and we are calling it I'll Be Gnome for Christmas. These are some really adorable needle felted pillows on our Grey Heather 100% wool felt. We're going to show you how you can needle felt these for your very own couch or maybe even to give as a gift. But hey, you don't have to make pillows. You can even make a table runner um, or you could make wall art if you prefer. We're going to show you how to do it right now. Let's take a quick look at the supplies for this project. We are looking at, uh, this is uh, what comes in the kit, is you're gonna get a 12 by 18 strip of our gray heathered felt. That is so, if you wanna do a table runner, you'll have one long table runner of 36 inches long, or you can cut it in half and make a pillow like we did. You're going to get, with the kit, you'll get this little printout, which will list the supplies, but it's also gonna have the two patterns, the gnome decorating his tree and the two gnomes dragging their tree um, to get it in place. You will get a red zipper. Our first kits anyway are going out with a matching red zipper. You will get white and red DMC floss so you can do a blanket stitch on yours or any kind of decoration and you're going to get the same wool colors that we use in the video tutorial which is a range of our MC1 batting. What you will also want is some needle felting foam. I'm working on our Earth Harmony needle felting foam, at least a size of 10 by 7. You will want some felting needles, and I suggest 38 star and 42 triangle. Those off are an upgrade in the kit, as is a 10 by 7 foam. You can get the deluxe kit and get foam and felting needles. You will want an embroidery needle, uh, some scissors, and I am suggesting this pen. I've used a few different pens. This is the Uniball uh, Signo Gel pen because it shows up on the black felt. I have tried uh, Sharpie and Industrial kind of, um, this is Inkzol. This works also, but it makes a super blunt line. And I've tried the Clover uh, chalk liner, no good. So this is the pen I am suggesting. And you'll also want a pillow form. We'll, mine is a nine by 12, I mean, sorry, a 12 by 18. So we will include a link for that in the description down below. And that's all you need for this project. So let's jump into it. The support document includes a list of what the supplies are, but you're also going to get the drawings. So these are based on my original drawings, and this is just the line art version. So you'll get these, you'll get both drawings in the pattern. Um, you'll get both drawings in the pattern that you can use to make your own. Like I said, whether you want to make a table runner or a pillow, and these are going to come on cardstock, and I'll tell you why here in a minute. Today we're going to be doing this guy, so make sure that you have scissors so you can cut out all these little fussy parts. And you're also going to maybe want some embroidery scissors if needed. You're going to want some needle felting foam and our kit gives you the option to upgrade uh, to add a 10 by 7 Earth Harmony needle felting foam if you don't have one. And you're also going to want felting needles. Today I'm going to be using mostly my 38 star and 42 triangle needles and if you can upgrade the kit also and get those in the kit so uh what else do we need not much unless you're going to sew and then you you might need uh, a sewing machine so this is going to be like the first time you don't see me suggest an iron-on transfer pen and um, the reason for that is i've tried the iron-on transfer pen let me just give you a look here. I tried an iron-on transfer pen on this felt and it was very difficult. I also used a black Sharpie, a uh, pointed one, and it made a very sharp line. And I also tried this uh, Milwaukee Ink Sol that I got at the very fancy Home Depot. <laughs> and these work, but they make a very blunt, blunt line. So after making several attempts, oh, I tried Taylor's Chalk, I tried my white Jelly Roll pen, which does work on the solid color felts that we have. Um, and I tried the clover chalk liner thingy, all to no avail. And so I reached over in my pen cup at home and pulled out this gel ink pen. These uniballs, it's like a 0.7 uniball, my husband uses these. 
And as it turns out, so does Danny Ives. So when she uh-huh. told me to get these for the class a couple of years back, I said, oh, hey, I know those because Rodney uses those too. So this is the pen we used. And I'm going to tell you how to cut this guy up. You might think that you just want to cut out the whole shape, but this is what I'm going to suggest. You're going to want to cut out the Christmas tree and the gnome and divide them just like that right there. So make the two independent of each other so that you can find your way in the drawing. And on this, I've outlined the Christmas tree. Let me see if I can get in just a little bit closer for you. Um, I'm going to try and get in just so you can see the ink on the felt because it's on there. And I know it's a little difficult to see, but we'll get wool on here pretty quick. So uh, let, me just let me get a line in here for you. I have traced around my tree, and I can see it now. And you can go back and make it darker. You see that show up fine? Um, and it looks real boring on your screen right now, but in a minute, we'll start filling in some wool, and you can see what we have going on. So I have traced around this Christmas tree just like this. And you'll want to tr trace around yours and just go as many times as you need to to make those lines really nice and bold so that you can see them. And this guy, so you can see I have no ink here, we're going to trace around him and he kind of goes into the tree. And don't worry about it being bigger. I'll tell you that this design is going to shift a little bit as you work and it's really okay. What you'll do is just keep adjusting where the lines go as you work. So it's just no big deal. It's just a gnome <laughs> in the snow. <laughs> so this is, you know, for people who don't draw or even if you do draw and you just like to have a little bit of an assist. Now, some people could just freehand this guy with no problem. Oh, I'm not always all, all the way on the screen. Some people could freehand this guy with no problem and I'm not that person. Even though I drew these, I had to draw them with pencil. So I did draw them at first, but I had to draw them with pencil. So now you can see, can you see my Nomi outline here? It'll give us a thumbs up. So now what I'm gonna do is take my little guy and with him in place, I'm just going to go, oh, his cap goes about there. And if it's not the right place, just bring the line back down. So there's where his cap goes. And look, his coat cuts naturally right across here. So I want to make that line real obvious. The center of his legs is right about here. Put him in for yourself so you can see. And his boots are a little more shallow right there. And now what I want you to notice is that for his arm, I cut it. Uh -huh. I cut his arm so that I can see exactly where that is. Because right here, you know, his little beard, his little beard comes there, but my hands are in the way. Um, his arm get his coat in the right place is going to come right there. So even if you're not feeling all that confident, then you can cut away parts that help you see where everything goes. And before I begin adding wool, I just add in, well, here's like, here's this little nose and here's the suggestion of his face. I'll probably make his face a little bigger and his ear is here and his hair is there. So we get the basic idea and I may tend to make his beard a little bit bigger every time. And you just want to get your basic outlines in place. And the rest of the way, I promise, you're going to find your way as you go. Oh, perfect. The cut, cutting the template trick is, uh, is really, really helpful. OK. So with that in mind, for people who endeavor to do the two Nomi guys, let me show you that, that really quickly so that I don't forget to show you. Um, what, what you'll do on the two guys, the two guys, they're interesting, they're interesting and they're cute, and they, but what you see is their bodies kind of intersect right here. So what I suggest is cutting out the whole thing as one unit. Trace around that whole unit so you have all of those major outlines in place, and then you can start bisecting your pieces. So here's how I did mine, and literally, True, even though I drew the images myself, this is what I ended up doing. Chopping them up so that I could see where they are, you know, and where they come together, however they come together. Here's their little bodies. 
So once I got the major outlines in place, then I cut the template so that I could go back and find all those lines. And you know what? Their legs shifted a little bit or whatever. Look how they, you know, the paper bends or whatever, but it just doesn't matter. Once you get them in place, they're going to look adorable. So don't fuss with all that too much. All right, I'm gonna get all my stuff out of here and we can stat. All right, and I'm gonna come out. I'm gonna come out just a little bit. Uh, let me know any questions. Oh, Elizabeth says, fun, fun, fun. I can't wait to do this. <laughs> it's pretty fun, y'all. I, I would just keep doing it. I mean, I could just keep making these guys. So we're going to take our best uh, crack at it. We're going to just crack on, as they say on the Great British Baking Show. <laughs> and we're going to get as much of this felted as we can. And at the very end, uh, we'll talk about... Um, finishing off your pillow. We won't have time for a zipper tutorial or anything fancy like that, but we can at least look at the blanket stitching. I'm starting off with MC1 Spruce. For those who don't know, MC1 is our signature batting. It is a favorite for needle felting and, oh hey, by the way, you can wet felt it, but what we love is that you can needle felt it really um, smoothly and you can also blend it well with other colors. This is how I did my tree. Bob Ross style, because I love that guy. And what I do is I started just kind of in the peak. And I just kind of drafting the wool down. And I'm going to needle felt kind of down towards a center. I'm using my 38 star. And um, oh, here's one in a tool, a 38 star. And this particular wool, I would say, you know, really anchor that fiber down in well. I think my pillows need more needle felting, and I can needle felt them uh, even with the pillows in. But what I love about the zipper design is that you can take your pillow out, add embellishments to it if you want. You know, you could even make someone the pillow and then give it to them to needle felt because a 10 by 7 could slip inside. So something to think about is that uh, you can needle felt that pillow and then, I mean, sew the pillow together and then keep working on it if you want to. Like, you know, you could travel with it. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was just an idea. You could take it to go. Is okay. this a good project for beginners? I think it's a really good project for beginners, especially if you're not, I'm gonna use a cluster tool just to demonstrate that, especially if you know, you're not too hard on yourself and you just give yourself an opportunity to go for it. You're tracing outlines and then just let yourself be guided as you go along the way. Now I tend to do this sort of a straight line down the middle, kind of like a Bob Ross tree like I mentioned. I'm going to avoid this side for the moment where my Nomi is and I'm gonna work from this side over here. Are we close enough? Does everyone feel like, um, do I need to zoom in or anything? I can maybe go in a just a pinch. Yeah. And maybe I'll, maybe I'll just try and move myself up a little bit. I want y'all to kind of see the sample while we're working, but here, let me do this. I'll bring him in there. Okay, does that work? Perfect. All right. I'm just getting here. All right, now what I like to do is drag this, kind of drag the wool across, and I'm going to work with this, with this needle. Um, so you can kind of start at a, at a point and drag it back towards the middle. I think I usually probably turn it upside down, so I'm going to work the way I work at home, <laughs> which is this way. Yeah, because I'm, I'm right-handed, so this is a little bit easier for me to do. And then I'm going to take it, because I like to go from the point to the middle. From the point to the middle. If you go this way rather than, you know, lay the wool down and try and fill in every little hole, it helps you, uh, it's gonna make your tree a little more variegated. Now, what you can also do is this. You can kind of go like, lay down a piece, lay down a piece, lay down a piece, and then come back and poke them down. There's something about giving yourself these points that keeps it from being too filled in. And then, then when you have a little bit of space, you can come back and fill it in with even a little bit of darker colors. Can you see? Mary Ellen asks, when you poke, do you go straight down or are you going at an angle? I'm pretty much just going straight down. I, this wool, I really want to anchor it to this felt. This felt feels like 
It feels like this heathered felt takes a little more effort to get the wool anchored than our other felt, and I'm not sure why. You can see all these white fibers in here, and this is the same, uh, this is the same production facility that makes our other wool felt, but this stuff is just a little different, and that's why I'm using the 38 uh, star. I think you want to give it, you want to really needle felt it in there. Yeah. Now, so far I'm just working with spruce, but we're gonna add some other colors in as well. And if you feel like it's just, you wanna just kind of bang it in a little more, use your fine needle. Like once you have the points in place, then if you go back with your needle cluster, you can really tuck it down. What you want is uh, ultimately to be able to brush across it and it not come apart. Um, I saw someone write that they like, uh, Mary Ellen says they love that it's flat, but it has some dimension to it. And you know what? You can make this like as bulbous and as shapely as you want. You can really pile the wool on if you want to give it a lot of dimension. So just do whatever speaks to you when it comes to that. And what color green are you using? This is MC1 Spruce. thick is the felt? This is a one millimeter felt, so it's not any thicker than that. On my sewing machine, it sews fine. I've sewn the felt to felt, and I've sewn the felt to fabric. It does get a little bulky when you're doing a zipper, you know, or, you know, something like that, but um, if you just take your time, Otherwise, just the felt to felt, it's no thicker than, uh, you know, sometimes foam, like a foam interfacing or something like that, of, you know, that you might put in. So it's really easy to sew and it's really easy to hand stitch too. It's very easy to hand stitch. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of get this side filled in to the best of my ability. And then we're gonna blend in a little bit of shading as well, just to show you how to do that. Now, if you've never needle felted 2D, this is a really fun project because the subject is really simple too. You know, it's it's big enough that it's not too fussy. And honestly, I think you're gonna find when we get to the gnome bit <laughs> that it's not it's not so complex. You know, it's really a pretty easy thing to do. Yeah. So how well does the needle felted design hold up? Well, it really depends on what you're gonna put it through. So let me say this. I have needle felted pillows on my couch. Some are a little more felted than others. The smoother you make it and the flatter you make it, the more it's going to hold up. You can also um, steam press it and starch it and get it like as, you know, packed down, but it should be well felted first so that you rub your hands across it and it doesn't come apart. Yeah, you really wanna you really want to get it really well felted. That is going to dictate how durable it is. Would wet felting after make it more durable? You can absolutely wet felt it after. And so the thing uh, I should point out on and on that note is uh, and I'm gonna spin it around and quickly try and do the other side, is um, when you if you were to wet felt it, what I would do is uh, just wet and soap this and, and wet felt like maybe through a sandwich baggie or something so that all you're trying to do is smooth this down. But don't treat it as a substitute of making the good needle felt at first because this is already felted so you're not gonna get it to bind more than this. You're just gonna get all these fibers that are sitting on the surface to play together a little better. So don't, don't think that just wet felting it is gonna get it done when you're putting it on an already felted background, if you know what I mean. You've got to anchor it well to the background to start, okay? So I'm going to just do my best to get this tree in place. Y'all ask the questions. Um, I know I had something I was going to tell you. I'm going to kind of get these in place because I know we have a lot to felt in a, in a short amount of time. We always felt a lot faster on the show than in real time. In real time, I think I did this little guy across two evenings just because that was fun. The needle felted bit and then the stitching. Uh, the needle felted bit was, wasn't two whole evenings at all. I mean, that one's pretty short. But the, you know, the blanket stitch took longer than installing the zipper and <laughs> so we yeah. know pillow. It takes time, but it's, real, it's a real quiet meditative process, you know? 
it's fun. Would steam pressing, does steam pressing it have the same effect as wet felting it to finish it? No, steam pressing does not felt. Steam pressing is good to do on something that is felted, but steam pressing does not felt it. Steam pressing does not felt your piece. It will add a nice finish to something that is felted though, and I do like to steam press stuff, but once it's dry, you know, then those fibers are just as likely to lift up again. It's not, it's not a sealer of any kind. Mm -hmm. What else do you want to know? I'd love to hear from you all if, uh, like, maybe you already, you already felt if this project is something that you think you're going to try. I'd love to hear that if you're going to give it a go. Okay, so we're getting pretty well filled in here, and you know, you can uh, leave the space right next to the face open if you want, whatever's easiest for you, and then go back and fill it in, or you can just fill right up to that face now. Whatever's easiest for you um, is what's probably the best thing to do. And we can even leave the detail for the trees um, after if you want, but I'm on the tree, you know what I mean? So like you can just stop right here on your evergreen tree and then come back to it if you want. Laura says, I will be trying it. I love gnomes. Oh, fun. Okay, listen, so I got this guy in here a little bit. I'm going to zoom in just a pinch so we can add a little bit of dimension to him. So let me come in a little bit closer and I'll just show you what I would do on the tree. Um, you can take your spruce, you can blend it with a little bit of black onyx. So this is spruce and black onyx. I would blend the two a little bit and um, just make it a little bit darker. And this is all I do is I'm going to take a pinch of each, stack them, stack them and pull, stack and pull, turn it over, stack and pull, stack and pull. So what we want to do is add some dark layers in here, some dark sort of striping. Iva says, this would look good with a gnome on the ladder, putting a star on the top. Oh, that sounds really cute. <laughs> really, really cute. Okay, so then uh, I'm just going to drag this black through at some various parts, definitely right along the bottom here. And then just pick some horizontal spots. You don't want it to look too even, so you'll take some underneath the boughs some across the middle, and just kind of draft it into place at first. And by draft, I mean, yes, I'm drafting the fiber out, which means I'm sort of anchoring it in one place and, and pulling to another, but you can also just get it on in a draft mode so that you just kind of get it in place and say, oh, do I like that there? And you're gonna wanna leave, leave some spots of the back showing through. That's a little more natural in an evergreen. Thanks, Bob, for the tip <laughs> and the reminder. He, he, Bob, Bob likes felting with us. He yes. comes, yeah. <laughs> uh, Mary Ellen says, two, dimension, two dimensional has always intimidated me. I'm a new felter, but this looks very doable. It's sort of like painting with wool. <laughs> yes, it is. It is like painting with wool. Oh. Mm -hmm. could, you, could we use art felt paper with the drawing on top? I don't know how you would get the drawing on top of the art felt paper unless you cut it out and you get the pattern and you print it out. You, you probably could and then you have to dissolve it, but are you going to put the art felt paper on top of this or you know what I mean? I don't know what, don't understand that, you know, that intersection. Okay, so now we have some black in place. Let's put some lights, some lights in place. I'm going to take a little bit, this is just cotton white. Um, and you can put it, you know, pure on there, like if it's snow, or you could also blend it with just a little bit of the evergreen so that it's not too sharp. Or spruce, sorry, this is not evergreen. We do have a color called evergreen, which is beautiful. It's like a blue-green. So this, we're just going to make some little snowy bits. And I would be maybe a little less um, generous with the white. You know, just take it, just take it a little more slow and draft it in, in places all along the tree, whatever feels natural for you. And if the black was sort of under the bow, then the white might be like above the black, you know? So little tiny bits. And 
Now, mine are on there very, very loose, and that's kind of where we will, we will pause it today so that uh, I don't spend all that time flattening all of that down. But you can spend the time to get yours anchored down. The fun part is kind of getting it laid on there. That's a little strong. So the blending helps it be from like too stark, you know, too stark of a white. Now, for those of you who weren't with us last year, we did a, like a mini winter scene last year. We shared it on last Woolly Wednesday, and we now have a little kit for that. But that's even even smaller, a little 2D scene. But man, I was really impressed with what people were able to make from that tutorial and posted them immediately after. So there is another fun project out there and it's even smaller but you can make just if you're not into gnomes and stuff uh, then it's just a little red cabin in the snow and on our website in our shopping cart if you search cabin then you'll come across it okay so look hey we have a tree. tree okay and then you can tack it down with your punch tool after notice i'm not peeling it up off the foam i want it to really um, stay in place because once you peel it up it's going to get bulbous underneath so we used to always peel it up, but honestly, we don't anymore. <laughs> that was then, this is now. <laughs> okay, all right, so I'm gonna jump uh, straight over to Nomi Dude, and I'm gonna start with his hat. And I know that he's probably a little difficult to see, but in your own, you're gonna be able to see his outline. Do you think that we can kind of see it? Mm -hmm. And yeah, Okay, and says, yeah, okay. So I'll bring my little guy in. Now, you don't need very much, very much red, so I'm gonna pinch off a little bit, just enough to be bigger than his, where his hat goes. And I like to start by finding my line. Oh, and my hats always end up taller in the, on the felt than they were in the drawing. In fact, the original drawing, the hats were more pointy and a little taller, but when we had them, turned into line art, they kind of got a little more modest. And I don't think a gnome's hat is very modest. No. Not, not in my family. <laughs> <laughs> so notice that the first thing I'm doing is I'm just looking for where's that black line, and I'm just going along the black line. And my wool, yes, is sticking outside of that black line. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. The line's about right there. And remember, this, this doesn't have to be exact. Your image can change a little as you work it. And where's the line across? It's gonna go right about there, if I have that right. It's gonna go right about there. So what I'm gonna do is once I have the lines drawn in, then I'm gonna just take my wool and fold it over. Take my wool and fold it over. And that is how I like to get a really clean line. So remember on this project, you wanna get your wool well anchored first, and then you can go back and smooth it down with the 42 triangles. And then I'm just gonna take this wool that's down here and um, pull it up into the hat. For two-dimensional wool painting, is it always best to add the lightest colors last? It does really serve you, but um, Sometimes I don't do that. And so like I'm gonna show you when we do the hat here right now. Some people do that. They're gonna put the darkest colors down first and then build up on top. But I tend to blend as I go. So I'm more likely to start with what's my middle tone, my mm -hmm. middle hue, and then go back and add the lights and darks. But it has to do with the way I blend. So what I'm sharing today is just sort of my way. Um, what color red are you using? Oh, I'm sorry. This is uh, the vintage red MC1 bat. Uh, then the vin uh, this is vintage red, and that is what we are including in the kit. So that looks a little rough right now. We're going to uh, we're going to make it a little more smooth with our single 42. But I'm grabbing a pinch of the uh, this is chestnut, a really popular brown, and you can either take just a thin, thin layer of chestnut like this, and you could patch it right on top of the hat just to give it a little bit of a ready look. And so this is an example of not adding a lighter color on before. Um, and then I'll take a single 42 needle and start tacking that down. A single 42, the reason I use it is because it has a really gentle poke. It's the the 
higher the number, the finer the gauge needle. And what happens is it doesn't grab so much wool when you stab it and it allows you to do some surface blending a little more easily. Now you could also blend the red with a black or a gray or whatever color you like and make your hat just a little more ready. I kind of like things um, well, I don't know. I was going to say I like things not too, not too cartoony, but that ain't true. It just depends on <laughs> what I'm doing. But like gnomes, I like to be just a little, just a little rustic. So I'm going to take some red and black. That's all I did was mix a little red and black together. Um, and this is all, this is all subjective. It's whatever you like. And I'm just going to go right around the very outside of his hat so that it makes it just a little darker back there. Laura says, great idea for the clean edges. Oh, could we add some Angelina to the, or could you add some Angelina to the Christmas tree to make it super shiny? Oh, you, it, it would definitely make it sparkly. It definitely would. And you could also maybe blend in some, you know, Tussa Silk or, you know, Viscose or something like that to, to make it shiny. But just blend it in with your fiber. Um, yeah, blend it in with your fiber rather than just tack it down by itself because viscose is really straight. It's a polyester uh, for those who don't know and it's a cut polyester and it just really sticks on up out of everything. Okay, so things always look a little worse for me on a tutorial because I'm not up close and personal with my work. <laughs> when I do stuff, I'm like really in there. Um, but let's jump to face. Now the face is approximately here. So what we're gonna do is just take a little pinch. This is peachy. I'm just gonna kind of, I want it to have be solid all the way through. So notice that I'm just tearing it and stacking it so that I have a nice little puff. And I am gonna put it on his face and we're gonna cover what we don't want with beard and, you know, with beard and hair. But you want the, you want the fiber, the face fiber to kind of already be in place. Uh, Sari says, this is getting my creative juices flowing. Oh, fun. Fun, fun, fun. Now, I have his face just kind of inside his hat, so I think that hat I wanted to extend a little further, but I'm gonna put his face right here, and notice that I'm just tucking. Let me just show I need to get a little closer. I'm having a hard time watching. I know you can't see the real one anymore. Okay, so I'm just gonna tuck this right underneath his hat there, because we're gonna have all this beard sticking down anyway. Now, that's just kind of the suggestion of a face, and you can tack on as much wool as you want to kind of get it in place. I'm gonna put just a little bit more on there. Let's see, our time is already kind of going so fast today. Could you use mer merino top instead of the MC1? Merino top is a longer fiber and it's a finer fiber. So for needle felting 2D like this, I would say it's definitely gonna be more of a challenge. If that's already something that you needle felt 2D with, then the answer would be use what's most comfortable for you. But I'm gonna say it's definitely gonna be more of a challenge because it's, it's not short and crimpy like this. Uh, Merino top is just finer, straighter, and it's not going to perform the same. So notice I'm just taking a little pinch, a little pinch of wool here, and we're gonna stick his nose, just stick his nose out there. He should kind of have an obvious nose. Lori says, I love the shading tips for making things much more realistic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so now let's go ahead and just do his beard, uh, his beard and hair. And that doesn't look like much of a face, but what's gonna happen is once you add just a couple of little features, it's gonna make all the difference. So look at this little guy real quick. If you look at how he is, it's just kind of the suggestion of a face. So we're going to bring that beard, uh, his sort of sideburns, if you will, and start right here. And we're gonna bring this around right underneath his nose and then down only to the top of his arm is where that beard goes. And anything else that's tree or whatever, we'll just have to fill in. What needle are you using? Oh, I'm using a 42 triangle now. I feel like I can tack the wool to the surface and not just lose it real fast. You can always go back, uh, you know, and add more, add more, but this is kind of like the drafting 
the drafting stage, if you will. And I'm going to go ahead and just tuck. Notice I just peel off bits and then just tuck it down here and uh, put it in place. Everything doesn't have to be exact. You don't have to follow every single line you put down. Those lines are just guidelines. Okay, so what I'm going to do is get his blue arm in here so that I can see exactly where that is. And kind of like I did with the hat, sometimes to make it easy, I'm just going to put down that solid color first, but I want to capture that sleeve line. So I'm just going to take straight black and capture where his, the under part of his sleeve goes so that I don't lose it. I don't lose that mark. I'm going to take it all the way to the end and even to the end of his sleeve here. And while we're at it, we can just put it down for the very bottom of his coat as well. And that making that line a little bit thicker makes it look like mm, you're seeing underneath his coat, like his coat kind of has dimension, you know? And while we're at it, why don't we just put some along the back of the coat too? So here's that question, do you start with the darkest? Well, you certainly can, and here's a great example. You can start with the darkest, and in this case, I'm putting black, but you could also just blend the blue and the black. So that's gonna give us a little outline, and hey, you know what, we can cover it. It doesn't really matter, but it gives you a guide of where you are, and I'm gonna put this blue on the sleeve right on top. I just stack enough that I feel like it's going to be solid once I get it into place and use whichever needle you want. This is the 38 star. What color blue is that? This is blue azul. We're giving you blue azul and cobalt blue. Lots of blues you could use but that's this is what's coming in the kit and it's what I use too. And so now I have a sleeve in place. I'm going to get the rest of the coat in place, and then you can go back and add the shading where you want it. Shading or highlights, whatever. Okay, so let's fill in our little coat. Again, just kind of find your place. This stuff, you'll notice, tears off really easily. Like if you were working with merino top, you would have to cut it. You can't just piece it in like this. And this, you can, like even where it's short, you can just take your needle and poke it right up, right into that corner and right up to that line, which is, that's the sleeve line. And I'm gonna leave that sleeve line slightly visible. Just slightly, you can always layer wool and add more on top of it. But I just wanna basically see where it is so I know where to add my details, whatever details. Okay. I'm just poking away here. Ruan asks, or she shares, the details get lost when I try to define different areas that are the same color. Is that the reason that you started with the black lines? It does help, yeah, because otherwise, well, what you could do is you could just fill in the whole coat. You know, you could fill in the whole coat with blue, and then you could take your little drawing, you know, your little man, and come back and then add the black line right over the top. So that's definitely an option, is just to fill in the whole area with blue. Um, and some people would you know, take an, a completely different approach and that's start layering the shading, which is what I've done on some of them, start laying the shading right away. But I'll be honest with you, this is kind of the quicker way. Actually even putting, you know, put, filling in the whole area with blue is probably even quicker. I think it might be like, you know, sometimes you bake a cake and you do the all-in-one method and some days you have the patience to, you know, blend your butter and your sugar first, you know, yeah. and then add your eggs and then add your dry. It really just depends on, you know, that you can take a different approach. You don't have to even own one approach. You can have multiple approaches. Okay, so we're gonna finish his beard and stuff, but hey, let's get this coat a little more developed because it's just straight blue and you might like that. You might like it just straight, straight blue. The punch tools, someone asked, does the rubber band really help hold it together? Yeah, look, <laughs> it holds them all together. It's just an awesome little tool. We always thank our friend Jennifer Field uh, for this tool. 
Love it. Okay, so now that I have that in place, let's add a little darkness to this coat, even if that's all you do. So we'll take a little bit of our blue, and uh, oh, we have cobalt. Uh, what we'll do is we'll take this blue, you can take this blue and this cobalt, and what I like about that, blending these two, is it just adds a little bit of life to the coat right away, because you just get a little bit of a mottled color, and you can just even put that on the sleeve, and it's gonna be a little more interesting than the straight blue azul, unless that's what you like. But I like there being a little bit of interesting color in there. Most things in life aren't solid, solid, solid. And on the back of the coat, well, we can put that same here in the body of the coat. Just mix it up a little bit so that it's not, maybe not completely homogenous. Just for a little bit of interest. And I know I'm gonna have to hurry, huh? How does the time go? How did a whole hour go by? We're just having so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to piece that in a little bit, and I'm going to add a little bit of dark. So this is just the straight cobalt blue right back here to the base of his coat and down to this corner, the corner and the bottom line. Look, you can just pile it on and not tack it down yet. And then you can take a little bit of this cobalt and a little bit of the black, blend those two together, some white bits in there, uh, blend those two together and then just give it like maybe a little dark corner right down here So you can layer these things on without tacking it down. You see how that like kind of instant, right? So you can even layer without tacking it down yet and you can s use the same of That little yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, so now we can just tack that down and I usually use my fine needle this for this because it's a little more of a gradual tacking down when I have all those layers on, just to kind of gently get them into place. All right. I'm gonna hurry rush on my little gnome bits. And let me tell you this, since I, I'm not gonna have time to finish this and make it all smooth, Take your time with your 42 triangles, uh, your cluster tool, and your single 42 triangle, and just get that all nice and smooth. Okay, so let's finish up our little face here, and, and what do we have going on? Uh, I'm gonna add beard. Oh, Esther shares, love, with needle building, love all the different things you can do. There's always something new to try out. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true, Esther. Okay, so I'm gonna get his beard in place here, and I'm gonna get the beard underneath his coat in place too. And you can just put it on there. You don't, you don't have lines, you don't need lines at all. You can just pick a point, his beard probably goes back about this far, and you'll have the little uh, reference drawing that you can look at anytime. I'm not gonna look at it today. And just bring that beard down kind of as long as you want. And notice I'm just guiding the, the fibers down. And once you get that basic shape in place, then you can add a little bit of character to it. So I'll take this piece, and I'll even twist, twist the end a little bit so I can kind of get a point to it, and then I'm gonna have that point come off a little bit, just to give it a little bit of fun. I love that detail. <laughs> fun, fun, fun. Ooh, Sandra says this would look great on top of Christmas stocking. Oh, that's a great idea. So see how that, just adding that little point kind of added some interest? And this whole thing is loose. I mean, I confess, this whole thing could be a little more tight, so it's gonna take time it's like decorating a cake or something. You really need to, you know, spend the time to give yours the finesse that you want. But let's get that face in place um, so you can see how to do it. Because that's probably a little intimidating to people, but we, we kept the drawing really, really simple. All right. So we have a basic face in here, and what I wanna do is carve out a little cheek area. So I'm gonna take my needle and just scoot this white back a little bit and give it a little more shape. I want my guy to have a little bit of a cheek and a little bit of an eye. So for my cheek, I blended, oh, a pinch, a pinch, a pinch of 
the straight red with the pale, well, with the, it's not pale peach, with the peachy, just a tiny, tiny bit. We wanna blend a little bit and give them a rosy cheek. And it's gonna be so small. If it's too red, you can always put another patch right over the top, but uh, he can have ruddy cheeks. It's really cold out there where he's decorating his tree. Drop it just right on there. Are we in close enough? And says, yeah. Drop it right on there and then use your little needle. Just keep it under the beard. So tack it down gently and tuck all those little extra bits under the beard. Like I said, if it's too red, you can just drop a tiny piece of the pale peach right back over the top. So mine feels a little red uh, and that's okay. At least you have it in there. And you could blend it more or peel it out if you don't like it before you do. But you can also just take another tiny, tiny pinch of that fiber drop it right over the top, and once you tack it down, he'll just look like he kind of has a rosy cheek and it won't be too hot. Very jolly now. Yeah, yeah, jolly, jolly. Okay, now for his eye, we just want the suggestion of an eye. Like for me, I didn't want something too, too, too strong. So you can again, take your black, you can even blend it with this uh, peachy color so that you uh, just mute that black a little bit. Uh, we want um, just a suggestion of an eye. I don't even have his eye open. He's too little to even worry about all that. My, at least my guy feels like it. So now all I have is this little tiny line of fiber and I'm just gonna tack it down. You don't want it to go to the end of the face. It's just right there. Left. Now we're gonna add the eyebrow. He's gotta have them big bushy eyebrows and you know they could even stick up over the top of his hat you know so take just a pinch of the white just glob it on there you don't have to fuss with it and then just pick your point where's it going to be round those edges out tack it down and swirl it around a little bit you can stick up over the top of the hat he needs an ear so he can hear when the cookies are done they're in the oven <laughs> so glob on a little bit for that ear and just make a little mound you know just the ear can be just any shape that you want you don't need a pattern or anything um, just kind of make the suggestion of an ear and start tacking it down the fun thing about the wool is it'll, it'll just kind of go where you tell it to so stick his ear back there make sure you leave a little room so he has sideburns because every proper gnome has good sideburns Shayla says, I love how easy you made doing the eye. <laughs> oh, you guys are so cool. Okay. Jill shares, I just had a picture of a gnome in shorts and a tank top and a cactus <laughs> instead of the tree. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take a, a pinch of wool. That's cute. A, just a pinch of wool. Let's just make a little ball of wool for his fist because we don't need to find fingers. We just want him to have a little fist that he can put his... Uh, ornament in place, just tack it right onto the end of that sleeve. It could just be a ball. It could just be a suggestion of a fist. I'm hurrying. I'm out of time, right? We're, yeah, we're I'm over. Three. Okay, there's my, there's my fist. And um, yeah, let's hurry, hurry, hurry. I'll give him a little ornament. So I didn't show y'all how to do how to do the blanket stitch, but you can uh, you can look that up online. I came prepared to uh, show you how I do it, and I will see whether I can record uh, any kind of support video tomorrow or another day. My goal this year was to show you how to install a zipper, and I never have done that either. Here's my round ornament, but I will see if I can if there's any way I can record a video to show you uh, you know how easy it is to do the blanket stitch or um, how to sew the zipper, I promise I will. I'm gonna give that good, careful thought. So here's our little ornament, needle felt that, so you get it in place. I'm going to zoom out real quick, real quick. And let's look at the bottom, it's super easy. What I'm gonna say is uh, for the bottom of the tree is get your maybe the chestnut we just put the chestnut in place and then um are there one brown or two browns in the kit and oh there's two browns, there are two browns. Yeah, yeah there's two browns right because yeah. we're going to do um brown for his pants so i wasn't able to finish uh in the time which is surprising considering <laughs> how much we we did with the other one 
uh, the, the little 2D picture, but um, I think you all kind of get the idea, and what I'll do is I will, I'll keep recording this so that we can upload a completed one, at least of the picture to YouTube. Yep, and so are there any final questions before we, any final questions before we have to sign off? I know we're over time on Wooly Wednesday already, so are there any final questions that you all would like answered? Someone yeah. says, I, we, I need a 36 hour day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my husband will tell you, I would just pile more in. <laughs> Rachel asked for the round ornament. Would it help if you ball it up before you put it on? I just kind of shape it. I mean, I think people have different techniques or styles, and I tend to, you know, do a lot of my shaping actually on the felt. So I think it's, you know, just really your choice. And then here in his little pants, I'm just going to uh, draw a little line straight down. And then you can make his boots black. Originally, we wanted his boots to be gray, but they didn't show up at all on this on this felt and you can even outline the whole little drawing if you want you know in uh, you know in black like maybe that maybe that speaks to you um, I like to I like to add some color to the tree trunk and add a little dimension in there and mm -hmm. so I'm interested to hear how many people are you think like, are you going to try this? Are you going to make a pillow or are you going to make a table runner? What kind of speaks to you? I know some people talked about uh, decorating a stocking. That sounds like a swell idea. Uh, Katie asks, how would you clean the pillow? Or how would you clean it? You, the, the best thing to do would be to bang out. You know, it's all probably only going to be out for a month, you know, a month and a half at most. So I would say to bang it out really good, um, air it out outside a little bit and tuck it away for the year. Like, but if it gets dirty, then you'll probably want to just clean it, hand clean it with soap and water, you know, but you know, maybe you can just vacuum it and clean it lightly. So look, notice that the boots, like we don't even put in a bunch of dimension and you still get the idea, you know, that those are, that those are his boots. And I'm going to just trim right around the back of his pants. And the whole thing needs to be gone over um, really well and smoothed out. Now, with the snow on the bottom, I'll just show you. All I did was just drag this, you know, just drag this wide around uh, based, on the, based on his mound. So I jumped off of where his mound goes and then put the snow you know, there, and then just kind of swooped it around and kind of banged it all down with my needles and, and get it all flat. Thank you so much for watching. We hope this was a fun tutorial for you. If it was, we hope you'll give us a thumb and maybe subscribe so you get notified the next time we upload a new video. Post yours in our group, Living Felt Friends, or tag us on Instagram at Living Felt, and check out these resources we're uploading here so that you can see how to get your very own kit or how to get the pattern for this, and maybe another video that would be of interest. Thanks again for watching. We hope you have a great, great day.